Okay, so now we come to what is probably my favorite phase of all, which is the segmentation phase. You know, um, engagement and ascension, they get a lot of the credit because that's where the money is made, right? In the engagement, you're asking them to buy, and ascension, you're asking them to buy again. But really, uh, the magic happens in the segmentation phase because it's the segmentation phase where we're asking our subscribers, what do you want? Right? I know when I was a kid, these uh, choose your own adventure books were very popular. So you'd go and you'd read and at the end of chapter one, it would say, okay, do you want to you know, stay and fight the dragon or do you want to turn around and go through this mystery door? And you're like, oh, I want to stay and fight the dragon. If you want to stay and fight the dragon, then go to, you know, go to chapter four. And so you'd go to chapter four and find out what happened there. But this notion of being able to, to choose your own adventure, to say, this is what I want to do, it's what we crave. We want options. We want to be said, do you like this or do you like that? And it stands to reason that if somebody raises their hand and they say, yeah, no, I, I like this, I'm interested in this, that we should talk to them more about that topic. And that's exactly what the engagement series is designed to do. They raise their hand and they said, yes, I'm interested in that. But the question that typically arises is, okay, but how do we get them into an engagement series? How do we get someone, if they're already on our list, to raise their hand and say, you know, yes, I'm interested in that. And the way we do that is through segmentation. Now, there's a couple of ways to get into the segmentation bucket. Um, and the way that most leads get in the segmentation bucket is they start there, right? Most people, the way that they are managing their email list is when somebody opts in, there's no real follow-up and everybody's kind of in the same bucket. So if you have that, then you got a whole bunch of leads sitting in a segment, sitting waiting to be segmented. Uh, but the other way that it can happen is if the engagement series doesn't do its job. If they don't buy, they, they raise their hand or maybe they opted in. They came from a, a, a cold traffic source like Facebook or Google to sign up for a lead magnet. They got put into an engagement series and they didn't buy. They didn't buy. Well, they weren't as interested in that topic as we hoped they were. So let's drop them and funnel them back down into our segmentation bucket and find out what they are interested in. You know, similarly, if they do buy off the engagement series, but they don't ascend as a result of the ascension series, then they'll go back into our segmentation bucket. So again, we can get them to raise their hand and find out what are you interested in. So that's why part four segmentation um, might be my favorite, because this is where the action happens. Maybe the money's made up here, but the action happens down here at segmentation. So like I said, this is your primary broadcast list. Uh, for the most part, engagement series, ascension series, indoctrination series, those are done using automated email autoresponders. Those are done with a CRM. So when somebody opts in and they get into an engagement series, well, that series should just happen automatically. And if they buy, then they should get put into a Ascension series automatically. When they first opt in for the first time, the indoctrination series should happen automatically. But segmentation, segmentation is your opportunity to be recent, to be current, to go to your market and say, hey, this is in the news right now. If you're interested in it, then raise your hand and tell me. So the segmentation is primarily handled through broadcasts, okay? Through actual email broadcasts, uh, the number of which is going to be determined by your particular market. And we'll talk about exactly how that happens in one of the later videos. Now, like I said, there is one job in the segmentation series, and that is not to make a sale. You're not broadcasting out to your list here and asking them to buy stuff. For the most part, you might do it if you're running a sale or if you're promoting a, you know, a tripwire offer, something that's real low barrier to entry. But for the most part, when it comes to core offers and profit maximizers, you know, we're going to ask them to engage. We're going to ask them to raise their hand before we try to sell them something because you don't want to sell somebody something that they aren't interested in today. Because if they say no, that's it. Typically, when people say no, they don't come back and say yes later on. So we want to protect our best offers. So the goal of the segmentation series is not to sell. It's to segment people back into new engagement series. It's also to reconsummate the relationship and, and to even maybe set some retargeting pixels, which we talked about before. And this, this notion of, of reconsummating the relationship, you know, a lot of people ask, well, what's the actual process of segmentation? Um, do you do it on the click? So when you send an email asking if somebody's interested in and, and they click on a link, is, is that what puts them in an engagement series? You know, do you track uh, these people that opened it? Uh, you can do that. It's not what we recommend. What we recommend that you do is that you actually email out to your list 
right? You actually email out to your list and you say, we have this new resource and you should opt in to get it. So typically in the segmentation series, you're emailing out to your list, asking them to re opt in. Now people say, why would I have them re opt in if they're already on my list? And the answer is number one, it's a simple way to put them in a new series. So from a technology standpoint, it's just a lot simpler and a lot cleaner. But what we found is that it's actually more effective from an engagement perspective, because what you're doing, all right, what you're doing is you are reenacting the action that they took to get on your list in the first place. Remember the way that they got on your list to begin with was by opting in to a lead magnet. They opted into a lead magnet. And now they're on your list. Well, when you ask them to opt into a lead magnet again, you're in a sense reconsummating the relationship. We call it date night. So just like me, I've been married for 12 years, but every Thursday night, my wife and I have date night. Now, some people who I'm sure are much less happy in marriage would tell you, well, once you're married, you don't have to take your wife on dates anymore. Well, I know that to be patently false. The dating doesn't stop when you're married. In fact, you need that as a part of the relationship. You need to go back and reenact those actions that you took early on when you were first in love. You need to remind yourself of that and you need to reconsummate and reset the relationship. So when you broadcast out to your list and deploy what, what we call a value first strategy, when you go out to your list and you say, we have this new resource, we have this new lead magnet. If you're interested in it, it's very, very valuable, right? It's value first. We have this new resource. If you're interested, go over here to get it. If you're not, no worries. We won't talk to you about that anymore, right? It's a pretty fair proposal. If you, we have this new chunk of value, we have this new lead magnet. It's on this topic. If you're interested in this topic and you want this lead magnet, well, go opt in to get it, which is going to put them in a new, uh, over here, the act of doing that, of re opting in, not only does it put them in a new engagement series, but it does reset that relationship. Okay. It, it resets that relationship. And it's important to do that because like I said, the money is made in engagement and ascension, right? The money is not made in the segmentation bucket. The money is made by segmenting them into these. So you can only talk to the people and sell them on the things that they're ultimately interested in. Really, this is how you make more while mailing your list less, right? You can make more money by actually sending less emails to your general broadcast list. You only have to send, you know, uh, you know, one, two, three, you know, a handful of emails a week out to your list saying, Hey, are you interested in this? Well, how about this? Well, how about this? And only the ones that raise their hand and say, yep, I'm interested, get the follow-up. And the ones that don't, they don't. And it stands to reason that if you follow up more with the people who are interested, who are engaged, that you're going to make more sales. It further stands to reason that if you don't follow up as much, if you lay off and give a little breather to the folks who are less engaged and maybe come back a little bit later with a totally new topic that you're not going to burn out your list as quickly. Uh, it stands to reason and it makes sense because it's true and our data bears that out. And so that's why I know this was a lengthy explanation, but that's why the segmentation phase is my favorite. It, it is the most powerful. It's going to allow you to make a lot more money and it's going to allow you to uh, maintain and sustain the quality and the reputation of your list. And frankly, it's just the kind of thing that most people, including most of your competitors just aren't doing. So it'll give you a big, big edge and, and allow you to grow your, your company and get more sales in a way that's really cool and allows you to maintain your relationship. So with all that explanation now out of the way, let's dive in and let's look at some example segmentation campaigns so you can see how to deploy this in your own company.